My parents, so they had this natural uh, inclination towards archaeology, so they started taking my sister and I down to Mexico and Guatemala when I think I was six or seven when I first when I first went. My sister was really young, and we went there almost there was a there was a stretch that we went every Christmas and they're not the resort type people so we'd always be staying in this grungy little infested hotel and then going off the next day to look at this a wonderful site um, we went to a bunch of them in central Mexico to Teotihuacan and Tenochtitlan and Xochicalco and Cacaxla and then we went into the Yucatan and we were at Chichen Itza and Coba and um, uh, in Chiapas at Palenque and all these places and so that really I, I, don't, I didn't realize it until it was er, later in my life that that had such a huge impact because I remember actually at one Christmas saying to my mom and dad, do we have to go to Mexico again? I just want to go to Disneyland. And, and that's, I mean, I, sometimes I still feel that way, but I've never gone to Disneyland. I keep going back down there to see these wonderful sights. And so my parents had a huge impact on my appreciation um, for well, learning what archaeology was and um, and how it could potentially fit into my life. The one is uh, a discovery I didn't make, but I was at the, the, the next house site over from that person and we all went running through the bush to the bush to go to go see um, what my friend Sonia had found and it was a, a tomb within this uh, larger building within a house group and it had a whole bunch of individuals uh, in there and uh, some some form of an ancestor shrine an ancestral tomb that people were in there and it was the first major burial I'd really ever seen being involved in archaeology so that that was amazing because it was everything you think of when you look at a National Geographic or th like it, and it wasn't a royal tomb or anything but it, it was it was compared to the little house that I was digging at the time which was this tiny little thing it was amazing and wonderful and then uh, uh, and then on the other hand I can go back to that little house that I was digging and I would find just really unique little artifacts that you don't find up in up in the center where all the elites were living and the king was living. You find such a diversity of artifacts and cool little knickknacks in that in that commoner household level, uh, and that that's great all the time too. It's 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 neat to see. Um, it's neat to have that feeling like. I'm seeing these things that, of course, someone's touched and used in their daily life a thousand years ago, and now I'm actually touching it, trying to figure out what it was used for, and I've never seen one of these. Out of all the houses I've dug, I've never seen one of these before, so what does that mean? Like, how do I figure out what someone was using? In the case of this house, it was a little, uh, it looked like a little butterfly made out of stone, um, and there was a series of ideas of what it was for, net weights and, and little ornaments that somebody would have, um, a little butterfly ornament that they would have sewn onto their clothes, things like that. Uh, but it's just, it's so neat every time you find something that stumps you, and you have to go through all these different ideas, and your mind changes from this moment to the next moment, and that's, that's part of the fun of it, is that there's so many possibilities, and you have to try to solve it, which is great. Um, there's the killer bees, and I've had to deal with killer bees, and huge cockroaches, and bats, and centipedes, and scorpions, and snakes, and all that craziness uh, that we all deal with. And so I was trying to think of something that would be a bit different. And so I, I do have a somewhat Indiana Jones moment. I was working. Um, yeah, I was working for a short period of time at a site in Guatemala called Nachtun, and uh, I was a late arrival uh, for for the group. I, I came in much later uh, than the rest of the crew, and I finally got into the site, and that was an adventure. That was one of those road trip adventures that it was supposed to take me four hours, and it took 11 hours to get it and sort of deal, so adventure number one. Uh, but we got in, and one of the stories people were telling was that uh, there'd, there'd been a they, the, all the crew members were sleeping in tents, and the project director had bought t tents for the local guys that were working with us as well. Um, but they didn't want to use the tent, they just wanted to build their own little beds around the campfire outside and sleep in there. And I guess they had woken up one morning and saw, found jaguar paw tracks walking in between 
their beds and so everybody was you know a little creeped out by that but the fact that the jaguars obviously didn't do anything is was was one thing and so i had that in my mind and this is deep in the Paten jungle right and it was in, in many ways the most remote uh place i've ever worked and so already you've got some anxieties about being in the jungle in general um, and so that was an interesting uh, moment to come in and have them tell me that but the I think it was like two days later my husband and I were were surveying the site and we left we that we camped just outside of the main part of of Notch Tune and uh, we walk in every day and then we walk out in the evening and everyone else had gone in the evening and so we were taking our time to walk back to camp and we had this odd feeling of being watched. And it's, I, I find it's very rare that two people will have that feeling at the same time. And we could hear sort of rustling. And we were walking along the edge. We had part of uh, what was like a low bajo dried up watery area on the one side and a building side uh, to our other side. And it was up in the, along this building that we could hear rustling in the in the bush um, at sort of a steady pace uh, that was kind of matching our pace like when you it, remember you know in all the movies where you got like the, the spies and the per people following each other and it's or or I don't know Scooby-Doo or something like that where you walk and then you stop because you think you hear something and it stops and then you start again and you hear it that was us doing this and we're getting nervous because we just heard the Jaguar story and then all of a sudden we look over to our other side and we see one of these huge turkeys. Um, I guess they're like the oscillated turkeys and they're not those little little ones and it's beautiful. It, it almost looks like a peacock. It's all these beautiful colors and we're transfixed by this beautiful turkey and sort of staring, watching. And all of a sudden we hear that rustling again. And it clicks right away because we were already thinking jaguar. There's a jaguar on one side of us and a big huge turkey on the other side of us and we're right in the middle and something's going to happen and so we just booted it out of there and we didn't see that turkey again. So.